We have a special episode today. We're going to talk about 2020's Marvel Legends War Machine. And we're going to talk about the Iron Man Silver Centurion armor. But that's not what makes this episode special. We have our first special guest. Yes, folks, people are interested in this show enough to be a special guest. And my guest is is I had to, I had to I felt like it had to be special. My guest had to be special. And um, special to me in a sense of because we're all collectors. And this guy within our community, he's a goddamn legend. <laughs> let, let me let you know he's a legend. Don't be fooled by the like the goofy chat shit. This dude is super cool, bro. Super cool, super down to earth. And he designs action figures. Yes. He was the lead for, for Marvel Universe's Three and a Quarter. Yes, David Vonner. Yes. And recently he lit up the internet with these goddamn Batman folks. Look at that Batman. Yes, I'm going to talk to him. But first, let's look at these figures. War Machine stands at six and a half inches. War Machine includes an unmasked roadie head scope, his hand cannon single blast effect, another blast effect for the hand cannon, a smoking barrel effect, launching missiles effect, Gatling gun shooting effect, also a blast off effect, and a flying rocket effect. And this includes all your War Machine effects. So let's get into the articulation of War Machine. He has that double hinge, double ball neck connection. So it gives his head the ability to tilt in those cool ways. He also has, of course, up and down the standard. But with this type of articulation, if you can look at the ball, it gives it more versatility and it's a bit more stiffer. It's good though. It's good to go. Now going down to the shoulders, he's a bit restricted from, well, there's a bit of restriction just because the shoulder pads don't rotate. But for War Machine, you're gonna do these kind of poses. So there is bicep swivel, double elbow, wrist and hinge, abdomen, back and forth, waist articulation, ball hip, thigh rotation, kind of tight, double knee and hinge and rock ankle articulation. And that is your articulation for War Machine. Iron Man Silver Centurion suit includes a second set of blast hands, a projectile blast, a stronger projectile blast, and even a stronger projectile blast. And these include Iron Man Silver Centurion's accessories. Let's get into Iron Man Silver Centurion's articulation. All right, we stop at the head. Now it has that pivot, that ball, double ball hinge pivot. So the head kind of can float around, which I think is pretty cool. If you look at it, he has up, down, tilt, tilt. And it's pretty sturdy. Okay, let's go over the arms. We have rotating shoulder. And if you notice, this rotates so it doesn't restrict the movement of the arm. Bicep swivel, double elbow, wrist, hinge, and rotation. Abdomen, let's go to the midsection. Ab crunch, waist rotation, ball hip, rotating thigh. It's kind of tight. Double knee, ankle, rock, and pivot. And that is your Iron Man Silver Centurion's articulation. And just like that, we're back here. So you guys saw those Iron Man figures, right? You saw them, you saw the video. I, I, the video broke it down to the simple, you saw the accessories. You have two, you have eyes, you can see. Do I even have to tell you what grade that is? Do I have to give you the grade for these figures? Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it this time. 
These are fucking perfect Iron Man figures. Perfect. I'm giving 10. I'm doing that shit. 10. Good morning. 10. Good morning. <laughs> Two tens. <laughs> These figures are so dope, bro. I'm so excited. Like, back in the day when I was collecting earlier, I used to get pissed off because I'm like, another Iron Man figure? Damn, we got so many Iron Man. And then one day I kind of, I was redecorate my shelf and I and I sometimes I'll organize I'll put if I got a lot of one certain character I'll put them all on one shelf just to keep them organized I peeped my, my Iron Man shelf and I stood them up I said holy shit I got the Hall of Armor so stop complaining about every time a nigga got their Iron Man every Iron Man is a good Iron Man shit don't complain about Iron Man. <laughs> They're good. That's dope when you have a whole bunch of different Iron Man. He has he has so much armor, right? So why are you guys complaining? I know I'm supposed to be calm, but I'm not calm about that. These are perfect. Out of all the armors from 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 starting from day one, bro. Like this is this body, this buck is based on the 80th anniversary Iron Man. And that one was dope back then. And then the figures that that body is yielding, tens. Good morning. That Iron Man 2020 is a 10. Good morning. <laughs> War Machine is a 10. Good morning. And they used it for the um, Silver Sentry and like the arms, but you can tell it's from, it's the same, same prototype. The neck, oh my God. That articulation is cold. Like the flow ahead at first, I was like, ah, cause it felt kind of, it felt fragile. But if you if you pull it a certain way, it'll it'll come clean off like pop. It'll pop clean off. So don't be afraid to like it gotta be like a quick jabbing force. Don't don't bend and twist and tug. You'll break it. It's kinda like snatch it off. <laughs> pause? I feel pause. <laughs> I should say pause. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yes, um, these Iron Man's are dope. I'm not gonna keep you long because we got this interview with David Vonner. This episode is gonna be him talking about the early years of the Marvel Universe, the three, the three and a quarters. He kind of broke down some history and gave you gave you some insight on the mindset of a designer. This man. You probably, if you are a collector, you probably have something on your shelf right now. If you are a Marvel action figure collector, I guarantee, I put my collection on it, you have a figure that he was involved in. If he ain't designing. <laughs> those, are, those are fucking facts. <laughs> those are facts, bro. Anyway, um, we talked about that. We talked briefly about the Batman figure. I was trying not to, because I, I really, like, I wanted to give you guys a history les lesson in a sense of the Marvel Universe, but the, the dude is so down to earth, cool guy, man. Um, cool dude, check it out. Say something real quick before you start. When, you, when, when, you, when you see this, you look at it, let me see your face. Look at that <laughs> smile, bro. I just wanna see your smile when you saw this. I took it down because I, I, I wanted to give you your props because this, this guy, we got David Viner on here. This guy is the reason why your collections are the way they are. This is why you have cells. It's your fault. I just want you to know that. Yo, I mean, yeah. you know, that that that's you know, I'm smiling for a lot of reasons. Like, you know. <laughs> See, One take. Like so, many, so many things that just come into play, like, you know, just about making it, you know, slotting the studio time to get Jesse in there to do the voice work and all that stuff. And just like, like with that head, how yeah. it's like, you know, that extra part. So you, the light can be light pipe throughout. Yeah, it's, 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 it photographs beautifully too, bro. Yeah. Look at that, man. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just, it was just, um, it was just love. You know what I mean? It wasn't even. It, was it, this, it did they get it right the first time? How many um, takes did it get to, to get here? Um, I mean, like, we kind of like knocked it off the park. Uh, off what? The park. Like, um, like, you know, uh, designed it and then um you know sent it to my my partners over in china and yeah. they just went to, they went to town and you know they just follow my direction we had to push and pull a few times man but you know 
it, it, it's still it's it's a couple things on there that I would like to change or you know on this one. Oh yeah. What? Like what would you what would you change on this? I'm I, just like you even had. Uh, come on, what exactly? <laughs> double elbows maybe? No, nah, because it, it got double elbows. Yeah. What you? I mean, what? It, it, it's just little aesthetic things that 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 still kind of gnaw at me, you know. That right. uh, because but, I, I tend uh, to look at them. I look at them like they're art pieces, and this is a style of a figure. Mm-hmm. Like uh, what we discussed about like Ron Lim. Like this fits that it, it fits the aesthetic well. Yeah. Of course, and, I would say if you were trying to match it with the new how the how it is now. Of course, there's tweaks to be made, but right, this is still this is a timeless figure, and it goes <laughs> through each. It, it works through each of the lines. Yeah. You don't realize I, how that, dope that, that is, bro. That, that's what I dig about it. It's timeless, and and also too that you know certain guys like have. Certain artists have been inspired by it. Like, you know, that look has kind of, like certain artists put that into the comic books or certain like the video games have kind of taken that look and built on top of that, so. Facts, right? Cause this looks like the Avengers game. You know that, right? This looks like the art <laughs> oh, from yeah, the Avengers I, I, game. I do know that. I do know that. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so it's cool that it's, it's, that it's a foundation for stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty dope. Is it fair if I refer to you as the godfather of the Marvel Universe? <laughs> like, real talk. Like, if, like, I'm talking to somebody that don't understand toys, I'm like, yo, this dude is basically the godfather of Marvel Universe, of the Marvel Universe figure line. Yeah, I, I mean, like that's that, that fair, was my dog. line. You know, I mean, it, it, it was, it's definitely not just me. You know, it's definitely Right, right, right. Marvel, you know I mean? But you were, the, you were the face of that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. gotta. Every time someone criti- criticized the figure, they said they said Bonner. So I mean, and not and, I mean, and not just that externally, but also internally too. It's like you know okay. when it's the line, like you have to you have to pitch it. You know what I mean? Like you have to present it in front of senior management. You know, you you you're the lead on it, so you gotta know every facet of of what's going on, like the right. cost, the marketing, obviously the design. Yeah. Um, the, the legal aspect, you know, the um, the shipping, like you, like you, you're you're very close to it. So every facet of the you know of the line, you're kind of involved in, you know. And, okay. And even with retail, like you, you and like the designers are, are are the ones that pitch it to retail. You know what I mean? Like we're, okay. we're standing there, you know, at that time presenting it so to the PR. Can, can I ask you something? So there, was there somebody I was like looked at these and was like, I don't know. Oh yeah. What? Seriously? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Like, I mean, because because the thing is, it's like they were, you they're know, perfect, and you well, start you you know you started a customized you started a customizing culture with these people. Yeah, they were customizing, but these were perfect to customize because you could take them apart and put them back together again mm-hmm. with mi- with minimal tools. Well, that that's you know I, I said this before but that's that's usually that's my intent when i'm designing action figures you know with the customizer in mind you know so okay so they, because you know i along with other designers are influenced by customizers See, you know, i know so, that yeah so it's like you know i always trying to do something that is like fun for not just the toy fan but the customizer right for, right with the comic book enthusiasts, you know, I try to Fact. throw something in there for everybody. With Marvel Universe, there was a lot of, there was just a lot of hate, there was a lot of anger, there was a lot of animosity at that time because, you know, fans were were already heated that Hasbro had acquired the Marvel license. Yeah, yeah, and, I do remember, I remember the whispers among the, the interweb, everybody, oh, what's going on? Oh, uh, it was I more than like, whispers. <laughs> it was way more than whispers. Like, and for the fans who don't know, yeah, may not know the whole history is that, you know, you know, prior to Hasbro having the license, it was done by Toy Biz, you know, I, and- I remember the Toy Biz ones. And, um, and Toy Biz had originally bought Marvel out of bankruptcy, you know, so this is one reason, and why, how Toy Biz was, strategically able to design all these Marvel toys you know yeah. Marvel Marvel toys based on Marvel, Marvel characters because they wound up buying them out of bankruptcy and owning them and they just had this huge catalog at their disposal you know what I mean so, right so in Toy Biz did you guys have more freedom well I mean 
we, we did i mean it's still the same constraints you're dealing with the same problems the same issues but right you know it, it's a it's a philosophy you know you know that comes along with that freedom like you have to have a philosophy where you create an environment for your artists to feel free in order for them to be able to create you yeah. know what i'm saying so like but that philosophy has to breed that type of culture if you don't have that type of culture it doesn't matter how big or small the company is everything you do is not going to hit the mark because the philosophy is all wrong right right you know so it was just that at at, at toy biz man it was like you know we all had this mindset of like yo number one this is marvel this is, this is the house of ideas we all love it but also too it was like you know when we were all there marvel was in deep deep trouble you know what i mean it yeah. was just out of bankruptcy and marvel was trying to find its way and it wasn't like how it is now you know what i'm saying right, right. Like marvel had a slew of movies or you can go and you know buy it like like you know just right right this is, these are like, the head and chest years <laughs> right yeah like, yeah. You could, like you couldn't go into a store and buy a dr strange brother voodoo t-shirt like, Fact. That was, you Fact. Couldn't see yeah that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you couldn't walk into a store and complain like, oh man, I didn't get my, my Scarlet Centurion Iron Man. <laughs> like, yo, that wasn't that was, <laughs> Right, exactly. You this, know, this it, is... like it was way before any of this. Like right. before any of that. You know, so um so you know, with with that, because Toy Biz had developed these not only the, the the characters but the the characters in toy form so intimately mm -hmm. when it came a point where it was no longer made business sense for marvel to make their own toys because it right. just was like you know we're, we're shelling out money and we're bringing in you know not the return that we need to so right hasbro is in the play of like wanting to acquire the rights to do marvel toys you know to okay. make Marvel toys you know so and because because even though you know the world wasn't what it is now it was still yeah. it was still an attractive boys property okay you know yeah I mean? yeah it was, it was still an anchor where you can get in boys and, and the comics were still high you know so, right and there's so, and it's superhero uh, shit Right. And, at right. The end of the and, day. and also too there was plans for a bigger hollywood push so with all that you know there was a lot of you know speculation involved where this is really going to be a very very not only one hot brand but two because you got spider-man and then within that you got marvel you right. know so it was like because again it was different like Mar like spider-man was the one that had all the anticipation and marvel was kind of like just you know kind of like viewed secondary and then okay. within, within that, like, you know, like I remember having discussions about, you know, there was concern about the Iron Man movie. Like people didn't know that if fans would know who Iron Man was. You know? What? Yeah. And then, I mean, developing the Thor movie, it was even more concerned because people right. were, you know, concerned if, if they even knew who Thor was. But it was like- Do you, you think know, that comes from like um, execs not understanding the, the culture? like? listen to me like i know well, what's I, going on i'm on the street like i know the pulse of the people what's you know what i mean I, like I, I think that is hollywood in general like hollywood has always been apprehensive about doing superhero movies like like you you get you get you know a batman or a superman film but like are are they gonna be willing to do a submariner you know or a you know you know, Shang Chi I, or Thor, right. like 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 that. That was back, a little bit imagine too that. Far. There wasn't even a thought back then. I mean, uh, wait, Shang it, was, it was just a little bit too far off the ledge, right? You know what I mean. So, um, but this is also one reason why the Marvel guys held held um, the toys so intimately. You know, so, right? Because this is where we could be like. We could well, flex, no, like, like, like uh, this is what we developed it to be. Like, we designed it to be this way. But then, when Hasbro comes into play, mm -hmm. and then they acquire the license, it was some animosity because the Marvel guys who developed these toys, who developed Marvel Legends, who developed Spider-Man Classic, who developed this 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 air and mystique about Marvel toys, are now have to hand it over to Hasbro. Oh, you, it wasn't like a like a joint thing. It was like. 
Well, I mean, it's because Hasbro is already a toy company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, God it, damn. So, so it's like the Marvel guys were like, you know, there to guide and to to approve. And I was there, you know, because I had left Marvel, you know, yeah. and I was brought in on Hasbro because I had the the Marvel experience. Right. But also, like, I knew the guys there. So it was like I could be able to communicate with the Marvel guys and, and communicate with the Hasbro people and kind of, right. you know, be in the middle where we can try to work together. Right, right. So you were, I guess you were the the, the joint. To yeah, I was like the step child. I, I was like the, the middle kid. I was like the kid right. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a crazy marriage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I was like that kid in the middle. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but like you said, those was the head and gut years, and, they, and it was like you know, you know, because, and also too, like you know, the guys who developed, including myself, who developed the Marvel toys, and then the fans who followed that, you know, it was a real, you know, they they were along for the ride. So when Hasbro yeah. got involved, it was a lot of apprehension. You know, Hasbro is a toy company, mm-hmm. right? Hasbro is a toy company who also has designers and engineers and everything else. So it's like. They want to be able to do things their way too. Okay, you know, because so so at the you, end of the day, it's all artists. Well, it's it's more than that. But you're looking at a property and saying, "Well, this can be improved." You know, and, the, and like we we also make our own products, and we can make these and improv- we, we, we can improve here. So it's like it's just that what they thought were going to be um, improvements didn't go over with the fans. You know, there was already a lot of you know, animosity that was going on between the Marvel fans and Hasbro with the six inch line. Right. So now so now we're introducing a Marvel three and three quarter inch line. Right. And and this is really upsetting the fans because the fans are like, how are you gonna introduce this new three and three quarter inch line when you haven't done the six inch line to our liking? With the Marvel Universe three and three quarter inch line had to face things that really I felt that no other toy company toy line had to go through that goddamn because, internet <laughs> that because, internet boy because you had number one you had its older brother being the marvel legends that everyone adored right yeah, number number two you had a company that's making these figures that no one else is feeling right number three to your point, you have this soapbox, the internet. Now people can go out and they can actually voice their opinion. Right. Does that does that take an effect on you guys, or do you guys just like this internet? Yeah, I mean because because you have to be you have to be tapped in to you know you know design stuff like you know like I said like I, I follow customizers so of course I'm yeah. a fan of this stuff so when you're a fan of this stuff and you follow customizers of course you're going to follow the forms and when you follow the forms you're going to read what's going to form right right so to be so, be, so to be tapped into what's going on with the culture you're going to read about what's being said about your line right right and to hear all this stuff that goes on and then it's one thing it's one thing to hear people say, you know, negative stuff about the toy line, whether it be negative or positive. That's one thing. But then right. it's like when they start to talk about you personally, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, then right. it's another thing. You right. know what I mean? Because now it's like we're going outside the realm of this is of being a toy. Like we went right, so right. far removed from this being a toy. And back to my original point is like this is why I design the stuff the way that I do to always have guys realize that these are toys at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day yeah and in the beginning all these are toys you know what i'm saying and and it's like you know we we try to separate all this other stuff and like it's an action figure it's a collector and it's right kid, right right and then with that it's like all this vitriol starts to happen all this bickering you know and animosity and it's yeah. like yo these are all toys so that so the three and three quarters line had to face all of that when right. no other toy line had to go through that. So so you dropped that first wave. Are you like like oh, damn, I love this wave, but you don't know nah. your hearts your hearts you knew, you knew like this is No, nah, you know, it's 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 different for a designer because by the time you design it, 
mm-hmm. and you're going through this entire process and timeline of designing it, designing it until it finally comes out. You're so, you're so far on to the next thing. Oh. So it's like, so it's like you know, I've designed it. Now I'm on to you know, I'm trying to work on how to keep it going, and I'm right, hoping, right. I'm hoping that in my efforts to keep it going on the development side and the design side, that you guys are buying it, so it's worth developing more stuff for right right so when did you when did you realize you had like like yo this is a phenomenon i never thought it was a phenomenon i never thought it was a phenomenon i just thought that it, when it came out i was like all right now that it's out i hope that is that it that it hits but it was like i knew that i knew how the marvel fan was and how cynical they are you know what i'm saying so <laughs> like, I had to, like Right. You know, at first it was like guys were like throwing the heat and the hate at it. You know, right. it was like it was just this hard press wave. But I knew deep down that the core fan, the core Marvel fan, was going to be able to get it. And I ain't talk, I'm not talking about an action figure fan. I'm not talking about you know uh, all that. I'm talking about the core comic book fan. Right. Who get what I'm doing. If you're a cool comic book fan and you read these back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and you buy this action figure and not only are you buying it, but you're opening it up and you're reading the file cards and you're reading all that stuff and you're looking how the wave is, that's what... what Who I'm writes hoping. those file cards? I was writing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You were writing them. Yeah, it was... At, in the beginning, it was me and my um, the copywriter, Forrest Lee. But then he eventually got pulled off of the Marvel projects and then had to go to, I think, I think Transformers. I think right. Transformers was getting all the heat. Like everyone was, was kind of being taken away to work on that. What's, so, what's um, the goal for when you write those? Is it to make, is it, I, I thought it was, it's a number count. Like you only have a specific number of words you can use. Well, I mean, it, it was that and it was also space too because right the file cards were only a certain size so so with that you only have a certain amount of time and space in order to read what it is you're reading it's kind of like are there any are there any easter eggs in those cards oh they're all over (laughs) the easter eggs all over over. you know i put i put in um you know uh fans you know in there i put you know stuff about you know guys in the office because it was, it was, it was like um how the final cards were were email correspondence or or yeah yeah office, memos and stuff so you know with with that i was able to kind of it was uh, called fury files or something like that right, fury, right, was, right yeah right. all right all right all right yeah 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 so with that it was able to turn in like certain s- situations and scenarios that were happening in the office and kind of put it into story form or it was just <laughs> like or it was the stuff that was always floating in my head that always kind of saw these characters interact when I wanted them now I had the opportunity to make them interact that way okay um why why no vehicles why it wasn't like vehicles like a big thing for because really it was a cost thing and eventually we were going that route like if you remember the heli the helicarrier was done yeah yeah uh, and also for the for the first Avengers movie um I worked on the Quinjet too so it was like there there you know, a vehicle vehicles were going to be morphed into the line mm-hmm. to eventually add more uh, more heat to the line. You know, and yeah, I actually yeah. had, had developed a uh, a Nick Fury flying car. You know, with the with the doors that pop out and the wheels yeah. that turn upside down and all that stuff. Um, and that was that was going to be. I tried real hard to get that into the line, but right. um, but it didn't happen. And and um. And eventually, that's when the entire line just took a turn. You know, are, and, and are there any are there any characters that you um, that you just couldn't get for some reason? They just was like, or the cost, or it just didn't match up. Is, are there any characters that the only character that I well, it's a, it's two, it's two that I wanted like really really bad, and one is um, is Marvel Man. Uh, when the, the, the Marvel acquired the, the rights to Marvel Man, and, you know, yeah, yeah, made it back into Marvel Man. Like I remember when that was announced, like Dan Buckley had told me, and I like, I like, I, I hugged him so hard, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. Marvel Man was always one of my favorite um, books, like that Miracle Man, right, right, dope, right. 
And um, so I'm really trying to to get him into the line. And the other one was, was Rom Space Knight. Oh, the square. You could yeah. you could have. Well, what was it that? Well, it's it's a rights thing. Actually, it's, ah, a crazy, okay. it's a crazy rights issue that Marvel and Hasbro actually Hasbro owns the rights to it. And um, but because it was kind of in this legal um, web, it was yeah, just. Yeah. We couldn't couldn't be done. Like no one could come to an agreement with it. Damn. As far as like the profits and ownership. And right, right. Did you did you um, prototype one? Nah, but I did. A, <laughs> I, I did prototype a um, a Modoc, um, and that was really dope. Like with a, with a head that turns like many faces from yeah, the yeah. universe. So like when you turn the head, it's like different expressions on his face. And um, I did a, a Nimrod. Before this Nimrod, I did a classic X Men John Romita Jr. Nimrod. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. Because the, the square, his style has that square look. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's adaptable to action figures. It's a, it could be adapted to action figures. Yeah. I was thinking. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but um, so you guys, your your, they stopped the line. What was or you you. Do you want to get into why you left, or I mean, it... I mean, it was it was layoffs, you know, and, and um, you can't control layoffs, you know, you mm-hmm. can't take it personal. It's just, you, you you're kind of like a number, and they, they're trying to go by the most efficient number for the company. Right. So with that, since I was laid off, I think that that seriously affected the line because, like I said, philosophy and your way of thinking. Like, you right. know, it's like my way of thinking is, is different than, you know, someone else's or my approach. Or and it, it, it resulted in the end of that line. It, it resulted idea, in the end. Yeah, idea I may have it, you know, at that particular day, you know, I might implement it. So, and that's what happened. That's, uh, that's heartbreaking to hear because it, these, these are, it, it, the, the three inch quarter line, it taps into you as a kid, man. It, it, mm-hmm. Like, just your, your Joes. You know, mm-hmm. Star Wars. So I, I always had like a collection of these, and they were just so perfect. Apparently, there's a Batman going around the internet that just drove the toy community crazy, bro. Crazy. And this is something. Is it something you just cobbled together, or like? No, nah, your- no. Nah, this was. It was developed, like sculpted, developed, painted, just like it would be. You know something that will go into the line you know and um like me like i, I worked with gentle giant like for years you know those yeah. are like my sculptors and everything and we're friends too so it's a personal and professional relationship there and yeah. um but also too like we were also working together on wwe too so we were currently like just working with each other and just so that's and stuff. i noticed with the new wrestling figures the articulation is cold on them like that yeah it, 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 that's it. yeah well, I mean, well, I worked with that's Bill McKenna and worked with him on that. But you know, again, when you go back and understand the history of it, like mm. you know, like like I had you know used General you know, Giant on those Marvel three and three quarter inch figures, yeah, right? yeah. And then General you know, Giant wound up developing Marvel Legends figures, yeah. but also doing other Marvel properties as well, and then okay. they started on some these um some mattel stuff right so right it's like even though even though they worked on different stuff it was like we had started together and creating like this form right and this form kind of manifested itself in various ways to right it's now. almost like you started a style of action film. we kind of did to the, so you just do this batman shit together like this is what y'all need to do like that's a that's a wild flex right there bro Yo, look like can can we talk about the figure real quick? Like, the, what kind of what do we do for the articulation in the neck? Well, basically, all of the articulation is similar to Marvel Marvel Legends, like everything about it. And and the whole point of and the reason being, is I'll give you five thousand dollars for one of those figures right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have, it. but the but the whole wait what being, like, you don't have the whole, figure. No, I don't have it. It's, it's Mattel has it, you know. So that's just and, thrown in someone's desk in Mattel. Like I don't know where it is, but but the whole purpose of that figure 
the whole purpose of it is like a love letter you know what i mean like not necessarily you know design it and make it this way but this is this is where we need to go because these are the frustrations that we have encountered for this long bro it was like you've had the power of every complaining fan in you and you channel that shit into this that is the perfect batman perfect mm -hmm. even you 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 finesse it you had the batman with the brown belt on it too that's cool see that's the thing it's like people zoomed in they zoned in on what they see right like the batman the, the blue and the gray and the black and all that other stuff but the original original foundation of like the batman like i remember when hush first came out yeah the comic book when we were at toy biz we were like yo it'd be so dope man if we did a batman figure like this like like forget everything else if we just yeah. did a jim lee batman based off of us like that would be so dope right because every once in a while at toy biz we would fantasize about doing other, right. other figures like, that, we would, it makes like, sense you're, you're fans of the, the genre yeah like we we actually drew up as a personal project we drew up um thundercats you know and we we were trying to pitch that like back in the day and um so it was like stuff like that you know what i mean and and um but it's like like i love like the cartoons man and i would love to do something like with the legion of doom you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and 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 with the super friends but like doing the way where it's like we can really expand on it you know yeah and, and, and uh it just be a lot of fun yeah man and we we're we do need a, a consistent DC line. Not knocking any other line out there because I, I love all the stuff, but we just don't have that that consistency with the characters. Mm -hmm. Where I know me, I like to stack my figures by teams and put them on the shelf. And it's I, I, it's weird to me when it's out of scale. Maybe it's my OCD. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. like a nice clean look for my figures. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we we don't have that anymore. What can you can you say the highest amount someone offered? Oh man, like you know, like some dude was like, I'll offer you like ten thousand for it, five thousand for it, yeah, yeah, because it's People it's one of the up. and it's like yo, know, it's like it's even if I did have it, it's not about the money, you know. This right, is like right. a love, it's a love letter, you know what I mean? Like it's it's like this this is the reason why we love it is the reason why we're so um angry in the action figure community as well yeah yeah, yeah. there's a love and a hate that's, that's simultaneously happening yeah right? I, I do know it's a it's a culture of negativity um mm -hmm. and i try like i try not to present like um the negative like because at the end of the day it is a toy like we're right. supposed to be having fun right we're supposed <laughs> right, to be having, like, right? like, like and, and also too man another reason why i posted the way i did man is because like you know like i'm a child of free internet you know what i'm saying me too, so me too. Um, like i remember back when we had like the best catalog or, or like the sears catalog and stuff like toy that. fair wizard remember them yeah, yeah yeah so it was like that's how we got our info on what the what a toy was or action figure was so i kind of wanted that again like something that can kind of hop out of the that's boat. that's probably why this is such a big deal because you captured that because it was just a photo it wasn't you talking it was just a photo right you, you simply put it, it's like i remember waking up and looking like is, are these and coming also, out what's and also part? too like if you also you know kind of really paid attention on the slide it was like you know there was some dc stuff kind of happening it was the batman week about to happen it was like <laughs> stuff that was about to happen it was like you know what let me just it, it, it was kind of like I, <laughs> It was almost like um, the beginning of the bridge. Like, I'm gonna let these folks know where I'm from. <laughs> In case you forgot. In case you forgot. Marvel Universe Godfather. <laughs> and this is and this is what I what I could have did with Batman. Eat that, y'all eat that. <laughs> it's we've been on here for a minute, bro. Uh, You've been on here for a minute, like yeah, me. I gotta, you, I gotta you know, off, man, but I know you, you do, bro. I know you do. Um, 
I, ho- I hope to have you back, man. I, sometimes I just want to shoot the shit with you, bro. Oh, get yeah. Get some insight, man. Like, this is this is probably one of my dopest moments in my life. Bro. Oh, wow, like, man. Thank you, bro. Like, thank, thank you. you thank you, man. Thank you. Man, so you got me ripping my shit out of my head, you oh. <laughs> Usually I'm cool, bro. You, 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 damn. Hey, uh, let me get off. Start editing. I'll let you I know you got to get to it, man. Thank you, sir. I told you, I told you guys, he was cool, he's cool as shit, like, like, no cap, he's a cool fucking dude, I, pre- I appreciated him, yo, I appreciate that, for real, Dave Vonner, thank you for, for gracing the Saturday morning show, bro, like, you are a legend, I don't, he's a living legend, fight me, fight me in the bar about it, what, anyway, we're out of here, we're gonna take a week off because we have some production stuff we have to take care of. So, no episode next week. Yeah, relax, relax. Just go back and look at the old episodes. There's so many Easter eggs. So many Easter eggs in there. And you probably, you're probably one of the people that got on a little late. If you was on here, go back and look at them old episodes, man. I, this show is crazy. This is a, uh, the episodes are cumulative. If you missed the first episode, you don't understand this episode. <laughs> Nah, you do, you do, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Hey, I'm out, thank you, God bless, good night, and relax. (laughs) It's action figures, you're supposed to be having fun. Fucking killed that one, I felt it.